Well, welcome to our 2022 Wildwood 171 RBXL. Starting right in the back bumper here. If you just kind of reach in, pull that cap out of there, inside of the back bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. So take note of those two ears in the adapter here. It's I'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. The hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here just to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things a bit fresher, and then that cap just presses into place. And then down in this corner from here, you got your stabilizer jack. Supplementing the stabilizer jack, you've got a JT strong arm. So it's just got that little leap latch right there. You're just going to loosen that off. It just allows the two poles to telescope inside of each other. So that as you bring this stabilizer jack down, have it contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up. That'll get rid of any sort of sideways bounce and sway or up and down bounce and sway. And then you have the strong arm here that you then tighten down just to prevent any sort of forward and back sway as well. Right. Making sure whenever you're moving them, you do have that knob loosened off. Straight up from there, you got a cable and satellite inlet. So cable on the left, satellite on the right. So coax cable just plug into the respective port, fires up at your TV location. Back down underneath, we got a couple of low point drains here. So basically, you just open up that valve, allows the water system to drain itself out. So the purpose of that would be if you're leaving the camper for a while and you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can just drain it out before you leave. Or before winterizing, winterizing the trailer, you just want to drain the water out before pumping your antifreeze through. Beside that, you get your sewer system. So you're going to kind of press on the cap there. You can give it a turn, pop it on out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had. So that'll attach the same way where you're just pressing it in and turning it until it locks in. On the left, you get a black valve. So that black valve is controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilets. So it's of course going to be your dirtiest water. So it'll be dumping that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank's gonna be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically cleaner water, we'll dump that last just to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Straight up from there, you're gonna find your power inlet. So as you pop this little port open, you'll find a notch in the bottom corner there. It's gonna line up with this notch here. Press those in together. Give it a little eighth turn just to lock it into place and then get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down. Following the cord back, you're gonna find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. A couple of steps forward and we get your water inlets. So you got your fresh water inlet right here. You're just gonna take your water hose and plug it into there, turn on the water and that fills up your fresh water tank. The drain for that tank is just right down here. You got a little gate valve right there. You just pull that, it allows it to drain itself out. Once you're done, just closing it back off. Right beside that, you get a city water connection. So your water hose is just gonna plug into here, turn on the water and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Straight up from there, you get a stove vent. So of course, propane stove inside is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. So you just want to make sure that your fan inside is turned on with this flap here opened up so that your fumes are then evacuated. Once you're done, just pressing it into place until it clicks. That'll just prevent any sort of dust from picking up in there. Exhaust for your furnace right down here. So if you're ever running a furnace, you just want to make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Couple more steps forward here and we get your storage compartment. So just the magnetic latch holds it open. Inside of here, you'll find a water hose and inside of that water hose is that park adapter I was telling you about. It's your 15 amp to a standard outlet, 30 amp for your shore cord. Storage compartment does this see straight through to the other side. And right down below it, you also get another stabilizer jack here. The only difference being that your strong arm goes towards the front and center of the unit. And around front of the center, you get a little battery disconnect switch there. So you get that little keyway. So with it in there, point it up. That's it, of course, turned on. If you have that turned to the counterclockwise and pull it out, that's your battery then disconnected. So whenever you're away from the unit, you just wanna make sure that's disconnected so that you're not running down your battery. If you're looking to charge your battery, you of course want that turned on. And whenever you're towing, you want that turned on. Battery itself is housed inside of this box right here. So as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or your seven pinch or tow vehicle, that battery is charging for you. Propane cover here, you just loosen off those knobs, push them back. You can open up the flap here. Inside of there, you'll then find your propane knobs. You can just turn those valves to open them up. They are just teed into the same regulator, so you're just gonna run off of the one tank until things stop working. Then you can close that one off and start running off of the other while you get the one filled. In front, you get a power tongue jack, so you have a little light switch up top, and then down below, up is up, down is down. Around the other side of the unit, we got the other end of your storage compartment. Okay. So the only difference in here is that you do have kind of access to all of your little overrides right here. So you have the two big ones right there, kind of the loops at the end. Those are going to be for turning those strong arms so you can reach down underneath with them. This little jack right there is going to be for all of your stabilizer ends. So it's just on a quarter inch drive. So if you've got a drill, you can run them up and down with that. And then this one right here is going to be for your tongue jack up front. This door is also a dry erase surface. So if you got some dry erase markers, you can make your notes and everything. Main entry doors, so we'll be using that in a second. Up from there, you'll find your two exterior speakers. They do have lights inside them as well. Cable TV outlet, so if you've got the TV out here, you can hook up. And then a power outlet for it there as well. 
That power outlet is GFI protected, resets just inside of the unit. This compartment right here, as we open that up, is just storage. Once it comes time to winterize the unit, you're just going to undo that strap there and you can pull this up and out of the way. And then you do get access to all of your bypasses for your hot water tanks just on the left side there. So you can see with them both pointed towards the back of the unit, that's it then in winter in summerize mode. If you were to take those knobs and have them pointed towards each other, that's then winterize. All that does basically is just bypasses the hot water tank, just allows the water to kind of skip around it rather than filling the tank, which in the winter, you of course want that empty. Hot water tank itself, you just got that keyway there, you line that up and you can pop it on open. All your controls are just inside of the unit for turning it on, minus the electrical switch. So for turning it on with electricity, you just have that switch there. Propane, that's inside of the unit. Once we fire it up on propane, it will go over a reset procedure. The button that I'll refer to is just right here. And then up top here, so before you ever turn it on with either source, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. Make sure that shot of water comes out, a bit of water coming out of there is just letting you know this tank is full. It's safe to fire it up and you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Once you're done, just lining up those two poles in the bottom of the door, line it back into place with that keyway, and that's that. For the back of the unit, you have a black tank flush back here. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically, there's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. So what you're going to do is just take your water hose and plug it into here, open up that black valve and turn on the water and that'll just flush out that tank, get rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue. Down beside that's your exterior shower, so you've got a key just like this guy here. You can stick it on into there, open her up. You get a three-foot hose with the standard head, hot and cold water, so if the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray him off where he gets inside. Once you're done, just looping that cord, or sorry, looping the hose around the knobs and tucking the head inside and locking her back down. And then lastly back here, you just get your spare tire. Straight up from there, you'll find a pre-wired mount for a rear view or observation camera. So now we'll make our way inside of the unit here. Your door is just on a friction hinge, so it just kind of sits wherever you leave it. Real quickly, I'll just show you if you got it wide open, you do contact your awning arm. So if you're going to be running your awning, you want your door at about 90 degrees or so. The only exception to that being that if you want to get your stairs out, they're of course these solid stair styles that swing out. You have this little wing on the side there that just holds onto the frame. If you have that door closed at all, it will catch that door, so you just want to be mindful of that. Slide that slider over, swing these steps out. And then you just have the little pin right there, so you're just going to push that and you can extend or retract your legs just based on your campsite needs. So now we'll make our way inside the unit here. And first things first is right up on the right there, we get your fire extinguishers, that standard pull the pin, point and shoot. Right up from there you get a light switch, it does kind of your, I guess we'll call it bedroom light, kind of just the front light there. On this back wall here you get this dimmer switch, so as we touch that it'll turn on all your lights. If we press and hold it, it'll dim all the lights down. Continue holding and they'll come back up and just release at any point to choose that level of lighting. Two more light switches up here. So the one on the right does uh, the speaker lights. The one on the left does your awning light. Awning itself is on this switch right here. So press and hold the top of that and your awning will make its way out. Again, you're just watching to make sure your door's at 90 degrees or so. Once that awning's fully extended, you're gonna see a little white flap come down as well as the black of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna wanna stop. If you are to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. So there's our flap, just a little sticky, so it's not coming down, so it's going to extend out a bit, and then we'll come back, and that should bring it down. There we go. So there's the flap, there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyways. What you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you're just going to pull straight down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. Then we'll press and hold the bottom of that switch, the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just watching to make sure that your fabric is over top of the tube. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is once you get up to about 15-20 kilometers an hour wind, you do run the risk of bending those arms just because it does catch all that wind, so again, you just want to bring it back in. And then I guess lastly with the awning again, just making sure that you're not catching the door on its way in. And there you have it. Straight up from there, the little red switch on the right there, it's your water heater switch. So as you turn that on, she'll fire up on propane. You get that little red light up there letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light will go out. It'll try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, this light's going to come on and stay on. At that point, you'll go and use that reset button that we've shown you.
stood right here you can hear the click of the igniter and the whir of the flame we know that tank is good so on the left side there you get water pump so turn that switch on turns on your water pump drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines and then up top you get your monitor system so on the left there you have batteries so you can see we're currently c for charging g would be good f is fair l is low your fresh tank as you fill that up will go to a third two thirds and full same idea for your black and your gray up top there you'll see you are pre-wired for solar so if you were to go that route your charge control will be mounted right there around front of the unit you get usb charging there a little bit of a closet space here you do also have the cpap access straight to that plug right there so if you do have the uh, cpap machine you can plug that right on in a little bit of storage down below here that is also access to that front storage compartment and then you can see it's currently just set up as like your lounge right now so you just have your couch once you're done and ready for bed you're going to take your little armrest push those off to the side pick up the base of the couch fold it down two travel latches in the bed one on either side pull those in towards you and then just before i close it i'll just show you this latch right there so that will catch on to this metal tab right here so whenever you're bringing it up you just want to make sure you unlatch it folds down super simple there you have it and so like i was showing you the cpap axis on the other side you do have the same thing right here another power outlet over on the wall storage right across the top there and once you're done you're just picking up the foot i'm unlatching it and picking up the foot pushing it up lock it back down with those travel latches the other side as well and then when folding it back up you just kind of want to bring it back over with it, it just makes life a little bit easier and then you're just st stuffing those armrests back into place. And where did this one go? I must have left it in bed or something. Oh. So a bit more storage down here. Again, that is access to that front storage. USB charging on the side there. Blinds throughout the unit are just these slow rises. So you just kind of pop them and they'll go up. Once you're ready to set them, just leave them where you want them. The emergency exit here, you're pulling that red tab to get rid of the screen. Take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out. At the end of the counter here, you do have this little extension there, so you can just lift that up, locks into place. Once you're done, you're going to kind of lift it up a bit, undo those latches, and then it folds back down. Straight down from there, you're going to find your LP detector. Propane's heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. A little bit of storage up top here. Inside of here, you're going to find that binder. That binder's got all of your owner's manuals in it, any remotes, anything like that for the unit, you'll find right in there. If you're to scan that barcode, it'll take you to Forest River's website and give you some information on this specific unit. Right above your sink, there's a little center push button on the light there. You get hot and cold water, of course, mobile head. The sink cover is folding and it is also stainless, so if you got to put something hot on there, you can. A bit more storage down below, just be mindful of your drains and your water lines back there. And then on the side here, you get your active Susie, so you get all your drawers here. So the furnace, we'll fire that guy up in just a second here. So basically I'll just go over it real quick though. Once we fire it up, you'll see a little flame in the bottom left corner there. So you can actually see that pilot light going. Downside to this furnace is it is not ducted. So it is just dumping all of its air right here. So if you're looking to move that air forward and back, you might want to get yourself a fan. Microwave here, so it just pops on open. Pretty standard, just like home. Right down below, you get your range vent, so you get a light as well as your fan. This is that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. The stove just has the bifold cover that flips back. You can take the knob, push it in over to high, hit the sparker, and she fires right up. Once you're done, just turn them back off. The button on the side there is all your knob lights as well as your stove lights. For the oven, we're going to pop that open. Then you get the knob on the far right there. You're going to press that in over to that little flame. Hit it with the igniter and then you can see that pilot light in the back there gets going. Once you get it going, you just want to hold the knob in for another couple of seconds and you can release and the flame will hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once you're done, you can turn it back down just to pilot and it'll hold just that for you. But if you're leaving or traveling, you just want to make sure it's right off. Down below that is just kind of a storage panel. Beside that is your 12 volt fridge. So as long as your battery is charged or charging, this guy's going for you. So you get your fridge down below, temp selections across the top there. And your freezer up top temp selection just right in the back this is a little travel latch for it so whenever you're traveling you just want to make sure that's in place so it doesn't fly open on you down below that we get your converter press it top and center and she should pop on open there we go all right so you get all of your breakers there whenever a breaker breaks it sits in the middle so you just want to turn it off and then back on to reset it and then on the right side you get all of your fuses 
So that's just going to be a generic nameplate. It's got the fireplace there. Of course, this unit does not have one, so that breaker is just going to stay off. Okay. And behind us here, we've got your kind of just more storage space here. Right? Stereo's beside it, so the power button there turns it on. Hit the power button again, that mutes it. Press and hold to turn it off. Zone 1 is going to be your inside set of speakers. Zone 2 is your outside set. AM, FM, you hit that to cycle through all your bands. USB is just right in the front here. Bluetooth, connect to your phone. Press source and that'll just get through all your, it'll just cycle through all the different sources. Press and hold source and that'll get you into your settings. And all your presets are at the bottom there. And we got your dinettes right here. A little light up top there. So for the dinette, if you just kind of take your table and wiggle it up out of, out of the legs, you can do the same thing with the legs out of their bases. The dinette table will then sit on either ledge here. You can take the back cushion still in the center, create a bed. Underneath each dinette, there is a little storage compartment with a little bin there for you. Same thing over here. Up on the wall back here, you've got your thermostat. So typically it's going to be starting from off. You hit that bottom bar, that'll wake it up. Hit the bar again, it'll come into fan low. So that's just going to turn on the air conditioning fan on low, just move some air around. Fan high, same idea, just moving some air around with the high fan. Cool high is where the high fan is going to be on all the time. Compressor will cut in and out as needed to give you cooling. Cool low, low fan all the time, compressor in and out as needed. Once you get into cool low auto is where it'll become an on-demand system where both the compressor and the fan will cut in and out as needed, but it'll only ever use the low fan. Cool high auto, same idea, on-demand with the high fan. Temp selection just with your arrows at any point. After cool high auto, you hit that bar again, it'll come down into heat, it'll turn off the air conditioner, turn on the furnace. So while we wait for that furnace to fire up, I'll just show you these two louvers right there. So those are basically your airflow control for your furnace or your air conditioner. If you have them closed off, you're gonna be using all of your ceiling ducting to move the air. You can open them up, it'll just dump all of its air into the living room here. So when you first get out to your campsite, you just want those opened up, cool off this area as quickly as possible, then you can close it off and start moving the air throughout. We just heard the igniter go for this furnace here, so down in that bottom left corner, you should be able to see that little flame. Now the first couple of times you run that furnace, you may get a bit of a smell throughout the unit. It's just a new furnace smell and it will go away. After heat, you hit that bar again, it comes back into off and then just cycles back around. Straight up from there, you got your smoke detector. There's the test. There we go. It'll go one more time. Then in the back bathroom here, you got your light switch over on the wall. Get some storage space, some closet space. Up above that is your roof vent. So turn that knob to open it up. In the back corner, you get the switch, turn on the fan. Your toilets just flips on open. You get your flusher on the right side here. GFI protected outlet back on the walls. So press on the bottom, reset on top. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Storage space there. And then again, just down below the sink, a bit more storage. Again, be mindful of your drains and your water lines. Hot and cold water at the sink, and then your medicine cabinet here just flips on open. You get that little metal tongue right here, holds onto this elastic strap just as your travel strap. And then to your shower, can't quite see it just because of the door here, so we'll close that off. And then we can open her up. Just got your travel strap right there, just comes undone. Slide the doors open, you get hot and cold water with the standard head, a little skylight up above it as well. And then just a bit of storage over on the side here in the corner. And really, that's about it for this unit. So if you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.